Contacts menu bar is really well laid out and gives you access to a bunch of controls and information that you need pretty quickly. So we've got the browser already open. That's the first thing. We have this master tuning and metronome section. And right there, we can see the master volume setting, the BPM, which you can double click and enter manually if you want. You can have it slaving to an external MIDI clock. And you even have play and rewind at the beginning for things that require song position MIDI data, like a drum sequence or a drum looper. You have a tap tempo button. Your metronome volume, again, if you want to hear that BPM. And the BPM is even more important. Not just um, contact itself doesn't have the sequencer, you know, built in. Like a DAW, you would run contact in your DAW or run contact standalone. But so many things use tempo information. Delay, effects, LFOs, everything can be synced to tempo information. So it's really important that you have good control over that and you can hear it when you're testing it. So you can right here with the metronome. And as soon as we are playing it, there we go. We can raise the volume up. So very handy. Master tuning, which is more handy than you might think. Not just for alternate tuning situations if you're playing in Europe or playing someplace that is not a 440, but if you're using contact with an instrument, a lot of people use contact in orchestral situations where you're filling in in a Broadway show or off-Broadway type thing, a play, and you're filling in. A lot of us keyboardists nowadays are asked to fill in for a ton of instruments, so sometimes you have to tune with the piano, and if the piano is not quite at 440, if it hasn't been kept up, this is really handy to be able to have so you can actually tune, get a reference tone, and give a reference tone if, if one is needed. So if you don't have a piano instrument loaded up and people want to tune to you, you can quickly give them your A. So all that is in the master tab. And anytime you click that, you can view it and then make it go away because you probably don't need it all the time while you're working. You've got the information tab right here which tells you about the currently loaded sample it's full sample size the version how many groups and zones so all important if you're thinking about your resources and exactly what you're loading up we've got the output tab which we also could call the the mixer tab and that can show you your relative volume of all your channels your aux buses and stuff like that this one's going to get its own chapter later on so we'll really dig deep into the output tab mixer tab later on We've got the keyboard tab, which is useful. You can see the zones that your samples exist in. So it will show you the lowest note that the sample goes to. So it's really trying to help you out for your own good and not giving you notes that a French horn couldn't possibly play in this case. And we also have the key switching zones down here, which changes the articulations. We'll talk about that a little bit later on as well. We've got quick load, so if you've got some favorite instruments, whether they're banks or multis, you can load them up right here. So it's, it's kind of like a favorites menu, just something you can load up really quickly on the fly. And we've got our files menu, so that's where you can create a new instrument, a whole new bank, and load your custom stuff. You can see your list of recent things that you've used and load them up from there, cycle through them, make new instruments. And uh, you can save your instruments too, save your multis or save just the program that you did in general. So a lot of stuff that you can do right there in the files menu. We've got our quick access to the options menu, which we've already spoken about. And finally, purge. If you've got lots of different samples loaded up, you can unload everything from RAM, purge all the samples, and then just start loading them from disk. And, of course, if you got a huge multi going on, your disk may not be able to keep up. That's why we use RAM. But we'll get into that a little bit in the advanced course, too, the sample management purging and, and marking samples for purging and stuff like that. Not something you really need to use in your everyday use, but if you really get into power use, you, you'll probably want to know about it. We, of course, have our famous uh, panic button. Very important to have. The... Uh, how much RAM you're using, how many voices are currently playing. Your CPU meter, your disk access meter. So even playing a lot, it's not really hitting that SSD that I'm using. So if you have a reasonably fast hard disk, hopefully your disk meter will stay nice and low. 
And finally, the uh, NI logo over here and the view size, if you want to view just a tiny, you don't want to see all the browser and that extra information, or you want to see everything that you're working with. So that's the menu bar, very handy to be able to jump around in that guy.